Right, what we're going to do now is we're going to look at the same type of problem where we just use the two concepts and our two concepts is conservation of energy and conservation of momentum. Okay, those are the only two concepts that we are looking at. So if you can turn your, book, your telematics book to page 61, and we are going to do number 12. Right, number 12 says the following. During an investigation, a police officer fires a bullet of mass 20 grams into a stationary block of mass 4,98 kilograms, suspended from a long, rigid cord. The bullet remains stuck in the block, and the block and bullet combination swing to a height of 15 centimeters above the equilibrium position, as shown below. Now again here we have the bullet goes into the block, so we know that that is momentum. When it moves from your rest position to 15 centimeters high, immediately it tells you that we've got conservation of mechanical energy or mechanical energy. The second point or the third point there Sorry, where they say ignore the effects of friction and the mass of the cord. As soon as you ignore the effects of friction and the mass of the cord, you know that your mechanical energy is conserved. Right, let us look at that example now. On your sketch, they give you the mass of the bullet. They give you the mass of the block, right, during this part. Would that be conservation of mechanical energy or is it momentum? When the bullet enters the block, you've got a collision. And when you have a collision, we know that we are busy with momentum. So the first part of that sum would be, problem would be momentum, conservation of momentum. When the block and the bullet rises to a height of 15 centimeters above the ground, because it's moving up, we know that we've got mechanical energy. And because there's no air friction, your mechanical energy is conserved. Right, so what we're going to do now, when the bullet enters the block, a collision occurs. If a collision occurs, we know conservation of momentum. When the block and bullet combination swings to a certain height above the equilibrium position, we've got conservation of mechanical energy. Now we're going to use that two conservation principles of mechanical energy and momentum to answer this question now. Now the first question is state the law of conservation of linear momentum. Now remember we said it at the beginning and that is something that you have to learn that the law of conservation of linear momentum is that the total linear momentum remains constant in both magnitude and direction. Now we're going to use this principle to calculate the magnitude of the velocity of the block bullet combination immediately after the bullet struck the block. Right, so if we just go back here, what we need here is, they say, use the energy principles to calculate the magnitude of the velocity of the block bullet combination immediately after the bullet struck the block. Now, you need to calculate what part? You have to calculate when this bullet and block starts to move, right? So information that we have at the top is at the top we've got the mass of the block. Right, let me just, we've got the mass of the block. The mass of the block at the top we know is 4,98 kilograms. 
we've got the velocity of the bullet and the block at the highest point. What happens at the highest point? The block and the bullet, it needs to come to a stop. So at the highest point there, we know that the velocity, because it stops, your velocity is naught meters per second. We also have the height above the ground, which is 15 centimeters. Convert this to meters, divide by 100. And that will give you 0.15 meters. That is the information that we have at the top. At the bottom, we know that the bullet is in the block. So the mass of, sorry, we left out, this is just the mass of the block. In that block, you've got the bullet. What is the mass of the bullet? The mass of the bullet is 20 grams. Convert grams to kilograms. So you divide by 1,000 and that will give you 0.02 kilograms. So this is the information that we have. So what we're going to do now is we're going to start at this point where we have the bullet and the block. We've got a lot of information here. We've got the mass of the bullet and the block. We've got the velocity of the bullet and the block. And we've got the height of the bullet and the block. At the bottom here, we've got the bullet and the block. At the bottom, we do not know what the velocity is. Because remember, the, velocity, the bullet strikes the block and then it moves. We don't know what the velocity is there. What do we know at the bottom? We know the height of the bullet and the block from this point. The height here is naught meters. Right? We need to calculate the velocity at that point. We also know that the mass of the block plus the mass of the bullet is equal to 4,98 plus 0, 0,02 and the total there will then be 5 kilograms. So what are we going to use now? You cannot use equations of motion in this example. Remember equations of motion, of motion is only used if something is moving in a straight line. What is happening here is that this bullet and block system is curving. And as soon as something curves, you can't use equations of motion. You must use energy principle. Right, so with the information that we got now is we're going to use it's moving from a height of naught to a height here of 15 meters. Sorry, 15 centimeters, which we said was 0, 0,15 meters. So we're going to use energy principles to calculate the velocity of the block and bullet. Right, so what is your energy principles? Your mechanical energy at the bottom is equal to your mechanical energy at the top. Right? Now I'm going to keep it like that because I'm going to use the information that I've written down. Remember what is mechanical energy? Mechanical energy is simply gravitational potential energy plus kinetic energy at the bottom. And that is equal to gravitational potential energy plus kinetic energy at the top. Gravitational potential energy, energy is mgh. Kinetic energy is half mv squared. Gravitational potential energy is mgh. Kinetic energy is half mv squared. Right? Now, remember we are substituting what happens at the bottom and what happens at the top. So if I look at what I have at the bottom here, I've got the mass of the block and the bullet, which is 5. 
gravitational acceleration, which is 9,8. The height there is naught. Plus, I've got half the mass of the block and the bullet, which is 5. The velocity, which we need to calculate, so that is V squared. At the top, if I just look at the top, what is the information that I have at the top? Mass again, 5. G is 9,8. The height of the block and the bullet is 0, 0,15. We've got half mass, which is still 5. And the velocity there, remember it stops at that point. So the velocity is 0 squared. Right, so if we calculate, anything multiplied by naught will give you naught. Half times 5 will give you 2,5 V squared. 5 times 9,8 times 0,15 will give you 7,35. Just double check that. 5 times 9,8 times 0.15 will give you 7,35. Half times 5 times 0 will give you 0. Remember, we want to calculate V squared. Anything more plus 0 is 0. So this will give you 7,35 divided by 2,5 is V squared. V squared is therefore equal to. 2,94. We don't want to uh, be squared, we want V. So therefore we find the square root of your answer. And that will give you 1,714, which is 1,71 meters per second. So the bullet and the block is moving at 1,71 meters per second. All right, doesn't seem as if there's any questions. Right, the next one that we're going to do, now remember what we've got here is we've got how fast is moving at this point, right? Because it moved from there to that point, we know that that is conservation of mechanical energy. Right, how do you know you have to divide? Remember you want to get rid of the 2,5 on the left hand side. So if you want to get rid of the 2,5 on the left hand side, you have to divide this by 2,5. If you divide the left hand side by 2,5, because that will cancel, you have to divide the right hand side also by 2,5.